What's going on guys, Norza here, and in this video I'm going to discuss with you my guide or just general tips on the journey to Diamond City in the Fallout 4 survival mode. This mode is very different to anything else in Fallout 4 that you've probably already experienced. After the first few hours and quests, you'll have to make the biggest journey you'll probably make in the entire game, which is the journey to Diamond City. Diamond City is a long way from Sanctuary where most of us will call home early in the game, and it's a daunting task to make that trip. So I'm here to hopefully relieve some of that pressure for you. First of all, I would recommend to get to around level 10 before leaving, so you can get some good perks behind you. I would strongly suggest picking up the Lone Wanderer perk. This perk at rank 1 increases your carry weight by 50 points, and it also reduces the damage taken by 15% if you don't have a follower. However, this perk does work if you have Dog Meat as your active companion, despite what the tooltip says. I would also definitely suggest spending time in the surrounding areas near Sanctuary, doing those initial quests, finding some good weapons and armor that suit your playstyle, and stock up on ammo the best you can especially for those favourite couple of weapons that you like using. As with the reduced carry weight, you don't want to be taking unnecessary items with you on this journey. Find your favourite one or two weapons and stock up on that ammo type. Once you're prepared for this journey, let's talk about what to bring with you. As we've already discussed, only carry the weapons you enjoy using and the armour on your back. I would also suggest to bring at least 10 stim packs, 10 to 15 bottles of purified water and as much food as you can carry. Make sure you cook any of the meat that you find as well, as it feels more hunger and it doesn't give you any radiation. Lastly, herbal stimulants and herbal anodyne I would strongly recommend. These beauties reduce your fatigue and lethargy and resist to insomnia and weakness. And trust me, you so are going, going to get insomnia war. on this journey. The sleeping bags you find in the wasteland allows for 3 hours sleep and the dirty mattress only allows for 5 hours. Your fatigue will quickly stack and your chances of insomnia will rise fast. Once you're set and ready to go, if you just want to get there and don't really care too much about what you're going to discover along the way, this is the safest and most direct route that I've found. The image on your screen is the route that I take when going back and forth from Sanctuary and the areas at the top of the map. It's direct and there are plenty of beds and safe areas in your path. Along this journey there will be three, let's call them checkpoints. These are the locations that I did and still do stop at, take a breather, explore around and replenish any stock that I might need before moving on. The first checkpoint I would stop at is Starlight Drive-In. If you enjoy confrontation, you can head through the Drumlin Diner on the way, which is just up from Starlight, but if you don't want to risk it, just avoid it completely. Once you're here, the mole rats will spawn, but they aren't too much to worry about. This is a great settlement, and it has heaps of scrap that you can use to get some initial resources from and build a nice campsite. From Starlight Drive-In, there are a few things in front of you. If you want to explore, you can head down to the Super Duper Mart and the areas around there, Otherwise, continue on. Basically, from here, we're going to follow the main road until it starts to turn west. We will then move off and head down south. This way, you'll avoid the bulk of Lexington and that annoying raider with his power armor and his fat man. From here, head through College Square, where you will find raiders fighting against ghouls. You can join the fray or sneak around them. It's really up to you. Once you've picked them all off, just be mindful of traps. This area is littered with traps and it's very easy to die unexpectedly. Just after that, you'll come across the second checkpoint, Cambridge Police Station. At the station, you'll need to help the Brotherhood clear out the attacking ghouls before entering. Once inside, there are plenty of things to take with you. Steam packs, armour, random junk, water, and a dirty mattress to sleep in. Once you leave the station, there's only one more checkpoint that I would recommend stopping in at. And it's basically the place that I call home in my current playthrough. From the station, follow the main road south. At the middle of the bridge, there is the wreck of the USS Riptide, which is a pretty easy encounter. I would suggest picking off the raiders from a distance, then heading down to collect the spoils. Once you cross the bridge, head slightly west, and you'll find a little alleyway that leads into Hangman's Alley Settlement. This settlement is covered in raiders when you get there, but the front door is locked, and for some reason, raiders can lock doors, but they can't unlock them. So just throw grenades, molotovs, whatever you've got over the wall, and take most of them out. Once you're done, pick the lock, enter your new home, and set up shop. I use this as my main settlement, as it's very central and close to Diamond City. From here, it's virtually a straight shot to Diamond City whichever way you want to go. I would avoid the subway for now and just head up towards the city. You will come across some mutants on the way, which aren't too hard to pick off, and the Diamond City guards are patrolling and will assist you if they're nearby. Just follow the signs and you'll find the entrance without too Everything much trouble. Everything outside the wall ain't safe. That's just how it is. And you made it. 
I hope you find this guide useful and learn a tip or two. I will be doing an overall review on the survival mode soon, and with Far Harbor just around the corner, I will be doing some content on that as well. Until next time guys, please leave a like or a comment below if you enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitter, the link is in the description. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.